So I'm going to show everybody how I set up my campaigns for YouTube ads, which is, I think, um, one of the most exciting things about buying media with YouTube is that there's really not much thought that I put into it. I just uh, created or I just uh, pressed the plus button for a new campaign. Here we have lots of different options, but I'm going to choose sales. And this is um, a, a newer feature within Google about um, conversion goals. I'm just going to leave um, the default, which is purchases, as the as the campaign goal. But you can create individual goals um, for each with for each niche that you run in, and add that in here as well. And then because I'm running a YouTube video, I'm going to choose a video campaign and go to continue. And that's sort of like the, the bones of the campaign, just a, a, video, a video ad that we're looking for conversions. You can just name your campaign here. For bid strategy, I always start with um, target CPA, which basically is like a target for what I want Google to shoot for when they're finding me sales. And I'm gonna start on the, my, 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 um, my ad account has a lot of data, so it's giving me a higher, a higher cost as a, as a recommendation to start. So I'm gonna start on the low end I don't want to scare anybody. This does not mean how much you're going to have to pay for each sale. It's basically a bid for your traffic. Set up a budget that is comfortable for you. When Google gives you these warnings about uh, increasing your budget, you can ignore it. <laughs> you don't have to start with an $1,800 budget starting today. There's really no choices to make for networks. It's chosen for you. You can just start with US and Canada. Uh, the language is English. The inventory type is standard. So really, you see, I'm just kind of choosing all of the defaults. Uh, it changes a little bit here where I'm going to, to choose to exclude embedded YouTube videos and exclude live streaming videos and I'm going to include content not yet labeled. I don't do anything with site links. For devices, I just remove TV screens because of course nobody can click on a TV screen to, to get to the VSL. I leave the operating systems and devices all alone. You can leave frequency capping alone. That's just kind of <clears throat> so your ad doesn't keep getting shown to the same people and annoying them. But when you're starting with such a big broad, um, a big broad audience, you really don't have to worry so much about that. And you know we're promoting um, uh, offers that have a lot of appeal that apply to a lot of different people. So I, I don't worry about capping how many times Google may or may not show my ad to the same person. I kind of let the algorithm figure it out. You can create your schedule here uh, if you would like to run 24 hours or if you wanted to do any type of day parting, that schedule is done here. After your campaign level uh, is the ad group, which is kind of your targeting. So that gets named here. And then scrolling down, this is where uh, it's just unbelievable how easy it really is. Because with audiences, I don't have anything here, and I'm just going to leave this campaign wide open and let the algorithm figure it out for me. And in here, I just paste the URL from the for the YouTube video that I've already uploaded to my channel, and then just create campaign. So I'll hit skip ad creation just so I don't have to paste anything else in.
because I'm creating a campaign that doesn't actually have an active ad in it, um, there is some more information that you need to give to Google um, as you create your campaign, um, such as just like very basic headlines, um, your landing page URL, the video ad itself, but that's really about it. That's how I, how I create my, my Google campaigns. All right, so today I'm gonna show you some uh, key features within my Google Ads dashboard. I am starting off in a very seasoned campaign uh, that, that has run for a long time. I just recently um, uh, took, a, took a pause from this campaign. But you can see at the bottom uh, line here, uh, th these are some of the metrics. These are the most important metrics that I look at. And these metrics are actually uh, for the lifetime of the campaign. So a pretty large average. Um, here, my, my click-through rate uh, is a 1.98. So that's that, that's actually on the on the lower end of what this campaign held for a very long time, uh, simply because it includes my my previous testing and it also includes um, the click through as it started to drop as the as the campaign did start to wear out after about six months. Um, here, my average cost per click you see is a dollar sixty. Um, so a little bit higher than I would like to see as an average, um, but uh, it was, uh, you know, the, the profit was there. So I didn't stress about having a cost per click that was a little bit higher simply because, I mean, I was making money. Um, here, the average CPM, this is another metric that I look at to kind of gauge how Google feels about my ads, what kind of traffic that I'm getting. So this is, um, again, a, a, a tad higher than I would want to see, but it's still in range. And it uh, again, my the profit is what's most important, and the profit is there. And you can even kind of see down here, these are the conversions over the lifetime of the campaign that were uh, recorded back to the platform. Uh, about almost 31,000 sales in total. So that's one campaign that was a big winner. And then if I come back to uh, the total that I have in here right now, here's an example of another one. This, this campaign I did a lot more testing in. Uh, and you can see here the click-through on average is much lower. Where this campaign ended, and I don't have anything enabled in here right now, but um, when it ended, I had done a lot, a lot of tests within this within this offer and within this niche. But you can still see here, again, the metrics weren't perfect. My CPM is much lower than, than previously. This is a 21 compared to the $31 before. And you can see that my click-through varied greatly within this niche as well. So the, the, the point is as well is that your numbers may not always be perfect, but profit is what's most important. And you can see over here as well, 16,000 uh, conversions within this campaign. To show you something a little bit more recent, so we were talking before about, um, you know, just kind of trusting your numbers and what to look for. So I can look at this ad and know, oh my gosh, this is a clear loser. My cost per click is $3.84. Um, my my click-through rate is, only, is a 0.55. And you can see here, I turned this off after it had spent $27. So not a lot of spend to be able to know that that's not going to work. But as I scroll up, you can see that the, my metrics start to improve. I'm in a 1.6 click through and a $1.63 uh, CPC over here. So there, it's getting better and more within range of what I want to see. And then scrolling all the way up to, uh, you know, trusting your numbers and letting the data tell you where to go next, here my numbers get uh, much, much closer to range. These are actually really, really good numbers that I was happy with, with a, over, a little over 2% click-through rate and a $1.03 cost per click with the $22 CPM. So I know here that, um, that Google is pretty happy with my ad and I'm getting some decent traffic with the traffic being at that cost. You know, talking about ROI being king, my numbers here are, are pretty darn good, but the numbers that I showed you in the previous campaign were not nearly as good, but my profit was actually better. Um, so being able to trust your numbers and make judgment calls based on just the numbers alone 
is, is, has been huge for me, not getting attached to, to any specific ad based off of, well, you know, the numbers are so good, so I just have to let it run and run and run. Uh, you, you don't need to do that. So here in the, in the click-through rate um, column, we've got the 2.18, which I consider to be really good, but I'm looking for something around 1.5 to 2%, and of course, better than 2% is, is great, but even in around 1.5, you can still do really well um, with, in the health supplement space. My cost per click here, uh, $1. three, and I'm really happy with that as well, but even up to around $1.50 within uh, a more competitive niche uh, like this is, this is for an, an offer in the weight loss niche. So super happy with that. Um, and, and, and it should be noted too that these numbers, first they're in U.S. dollars, and the, the targeting for this specific campaign is, is U.S. traffic only. Um, so th this really makes that cost per click even better considering it's running only to the United States. Um, if you were going to target multiple countries, like let's say every shippable country that you were allowed to target, really your cost per click should be much, much, much lower um, than, than that dollar to dollar fifty range. I would say dollar max if you are going to run to, to multiple countries.